All right, it is episode 87 of the Zen's Path 4-Button Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Powers, and joining me, just the two of us this time, Stephen. Oh, again, just you <laughs> and I. Just the two, just goofing off and nerding out and just having fun. We can fun. make it if we try, just the two of us. <laughs> yeah, just the two of us, you and I. Um all right, so we'll have a little bit more of a compacted show today, hopefully, but probably not, because we like to talk a lot, and that's what seems to happen uh, on this lovely show of ours. But to start us off, let's jump in real quick to see what we've been up to. And Stephen, what you been doing? I've kept it light, uh, just because I've been doing a lot of what they call Steam Deck tweaking. Um, you know, it's going through cleaning up your library, it's adding files, renaming them making sure everything's compatible. Um, Mm -hmm. Going into that, I have not uh, put the Street Fighter 6 demo on it yet. I heard it does run on the Steam Deck, but you do have to do some concessions and some tweaking, but it will run so you can play. Oh, yeah. Uh, It seems to run at a 30, 30 frames per second. Um, But other than that, I have tried the Street Fighter 6 demo on both the PS5 and Series X. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so far I'm really impressed, especially with the amount of customization for characters. Um, I tried to make princess peach on one of them. It didn't work out very well. (laughs) Her hair was blinding. Um, (laughs) the only thing I can say about people downloading the demo is unless you're playing like, um, offline practice mode or versus mode, cause it's just Luke and Ryu that you can pick. Um, if you play the world tour, as fun as it is, you're not allowed to use classic controls. You have to use their, um, modern controls, which is basically light, medium, heavy, special. So it is very weird. And you can hold the button to do combos. You hold the button and press like light attack really fast. And it does a combo for you that ends with a special. So they baby you in the demo, but it's, it basically at least shows off. Uh, everything about it that was my only gripe is you can't change it it says after you beat the tutorial yeah you can change it now but that's the end of the demo <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of chapter one um uh vampire survivor tides of the fuscari came out um i immediately um tore through that uh, i finished that got everything all the characters there was a good amount of characters to get this time I think I've gotten um, a couple of them so far. I need to go back. I haven't been able to play my Steam Deck in a, about a week or so. And then, uh, and then I heard the news that it's been so popular that now it's going to become a uh, TV series and an, an animated series. So I hope for an animated, yeah. <laughs> so that should be interesting, especially if you watch the uh, the trailer they put out on YouTube for Vampire Survivor. It was very well done in an anime theme. So I, I'm guessing, like, give it the Castlevania look, but not so serious, and you'll do great. <laughs> Um, other than that, um, I've had a bit, bit of bad luck this past week. Mm. Uh, limited run games did change their shipping partners. Oh, so even though all my orders were, were correct, somehow it reverted to an old address that I lived at two years ago. Oh, sh- and it's been happening with every order that's been ready to ship. So I had to call them and be like, what do I do? Cause post office says it's not them. So I did go to my post office website and make sure all those addresses are up to date and the rest of them are deleted Mm -hmm. and fingers crossed because it didn't happen until they changed partners. And, and because it's under most of their games are under a pound, um, they, they had them disposed of. So the tracking says it went to the wrong address and then it was destroyed. Jesus. I was like my games. Yeah. (laughs) Um, other Holy than crap. that, I am promoting next weekend. It will be the Zelda Splat Fest. So, still super jealous of that shirt, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you can't get them at the Nintendo store uh, online and in New York. Um, and I think some some places are even doing voting right now. I think GameStops are having a little voting booth so you can vote for which piece of the Triforce you think will win. <laughs> um, I think it's really neat. They're making making a specific modified map to look like the triforce so i'm looking forward to that i need but to get yeah. back on splatoon 3 it's been this a while is basically the calm before the storm in a couple of weeks yeah um so for me i guess we'll go into the zelda stuff as well you, i may not have that shirt but what i do have is a lovely oled system that i picked up 
this came out yesterday for well, yesterday for us, you know, whenever for you guys. But this is the ta- Tears of the Kingdom. I say Tales of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom OLED system. And if you're watching the video version of this, I'm showing it off for the heck of it. I love the pattern on the back. Those little, you know, circles and rings on there. We have a little bit of a texture. There's some little icons on the bottom of the controller that I haven't figured out what those are yet. They look like little letters or symbols or something. And hopefully that'll be explained in the game. And of course, the front, you've got the green and gold. It looks like the pattern going up Link's arm with his replacement hand. And the other side is gold and white with more of those circles. And then the dock itself has got those circles and this the lovely Triforce and other design in gold on white. And then little details of that on the back, just in the corners. So I'm really happy with it. It's uh, This is my first time getting an OLED. I didn't get one before because... Yeah, the screen is nicer and the 64 gigs versus 32 gigs of memory is nice. But I wasn't too worried about that because I already have a 512 gig SD card in it. So I'm more than enough for that. Yeah. Um, And when you play these on TV, they don't play any different. So I held off on getting one until I was like, they're either going to make a Zelda or a Metroid version. And then all bets are off. And they announced the Zelda and I was in. I had already pre-ordered it. Got it. Ready to go. I, I will tell you, your first time playing undocked on that screen, you're never going to be able to go back. It's beautiful. Yeah, I uh, I ended up giving away or kind of giving away my old Switch. Uh, my youngest son's best friend, basically one of my kids now. He's over here all the time, which is it's fine. He's a great kid. Um, He's always been really kind to my son and there when he needs him and stuff. So I made it a deal. I deal with him. I was like, hey, 100 bucks. You can have my my. You know, second generation switch, really good condition, Joy-Cons dock, all that stuff. I went ahead and cleared everything out and gave it to him today. If he actually pays me, great. If he doesn't, I'm honestly not that worried about it. I, You know, he'll get more enjoyment out of it. So I had to ask my friend Caleb, who uh, some of you may know from being on the show before. I apologize, Caleb, but thank you for being understanding and letting me take you off of the family plan so that I could add Jonathan onto it. <laughs> Well, Caleb's a big boy now. He's married. He, he can afford to to get his online. You know, Jonathan's a kid. So he filled all five slots. Yeah, so did all I. Eight. eight. There's eight, eight available. Well, five immediately is my family. And my, wa- uh, my wife was like, well, you could take me off of there. I was like, because she doesn't play it as much. I was like, no, you're my wife. You're going to be on there. That's just wrong. <laughs> Kick her off of it. So we got that sorted out. Uh, Thank you again, Caleb, for being understanding about that. If you actually watch this, if anybody does, who knows? Enjoy. Um, But yeah, I'm just waiting for this freaking system to come out. Um, The other thing I noticed as well, when you look at it, that pattern on the side for the controller matches on the dock itself, which was uh, Link's right hand in the, the game as well, having this kind of growth over it. And then whatever the left is with these circles. I wonder if it's got something to do with Zelda or I don't know. You know, we'll have to see. I'm sure this this case, this whole thing's going to have more mysteries given, you know, once the game comes out. Uh, but what I have been enjoying on it, finally, after so much time waiting, I have Advance Wars 1 plus 2 reboot camp and it's glorious. <laughs> I do have to get that. I love the advanced wars games and it plays so well on here uh way forward is one of my favorite developers i love the animation and art style and a lot of the work that they do and my hats off to them for the quality and everything they put into this because the game looks and runs phenomenal yeah it you know it's apparently it has variable refresh rate and all that stuff going on but i never notice it during the game like unless you're sitting there watching the little bar graph on like digital foundry and so forth. I don't even notice it plays fine for me. Half the time I'm just holding the trigger down and make it go quicker anyways through the turns. No, I, don't, I don't foresee advanced wars being needing 60 frames per second. No, every, it looks fine to me. I, I really do like it. Um, and that was one of the first games I played on my OLED and the colors really pop on this thing. I was looking at just like, holy crap. Screen's just a little bit bigger which is nice. Um, 
I kind of noticed that kind of quickly about the the size and it didn't look too bad until I took my youngest son's switch and put it next to that one to compare. And I was like, Oh no, that's a significant size difference. <laughs> like they really uh, ate up a lot of that space. So I'm happy with it. It's been really good, but I'm hoping you know, like if you guys, if you end up picking up advanced wars or I thought about even getting some extra copies for the house so my kids can play it. It's supposed to have really good online options where we can make maps and battle each other and share those, or we can do local multiplayer as well, which I'm going to try and do with my kids. It just seems like it'll be a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people prefer Fire Emblem and they can be fun, but Advance Wars is always just ah, chef's kiss. I love it. It's always a little bit. Uh, I've always felt it was always a little bit faster. So for people who didn't want to like overanalyze that, the uh, spear, axe, sword mentality, rock, paper, scissors mentality, and they just wanted to be like, what kind of train are you on? Do you have the advantage or not? I'm about to say that that still kind of comes into play because you got land, air, sea, distance. And, but, it's, yeah. but it's a little bit more obvious, I think, because true. Yeah, I have a tank called anti-air. Like, okay, I wonder what it's going to kill. <laughs> right. You know, it just works out for that. Um, the next thing is I've picked up recently a copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 for the Famicom, the original cartridge. I came across it in a local retro store and I went back and I was like, well, it, it plays a lot the same until I realized one thing and I had to go back and look this up. I didn't realize as much. In America, when you play Super Mario Brothers 3, say you get the raccoon suit and you're running and you don't jump fast enough and you hit a Goomba, you shrink down to big Mario, but that's it. Then you get hit again, you go down to Little Mario. In Japan, they followed Super Mario Brothers 1 rules. No matter what you have, you get hit, you're immediately small Mario, and that's it. So it makes it a lot harder. So I've been uh, working on that on my AVS uh, Nintendo, playing that one, just for fun. Uh, my other bit of Nintendo nostalgia been going down is I picked up where I finally got my Kickstarter uh, backed Game Starter or Game Master Classified. This is from Howard Phillips and Matthew Toronto. Uh, once again, bringing out the visual aid for this show. This is a nice, big, sturdy hardback with a lovely bow tie here for Howard Phillips. And if you recognize him at all, he was from the Howard and Nestor comics. He was the the source for where those originally came from. And he helped kind of build up Nintendo's reputation and what game choices they made in the United States and with a lot of the marketing and stuff during those early years. And it's a great history of that part of Nintendo. Uh, I managed to get it signed by both of them. And then what I really liked is it I, I paid extra and got one of Howard Phillips' original Nintendo business cards, the ones he had left over, that he signed. So that's kind of a, a nice little curio that I enjoy. Um, I know Steven, you said you went onto the Kickstarter and ordered a copy. Yeah, he was, they were still, uh, offering mm -hmm. more copies because I immediately got the green eyes of jealousy when I saw that <laughs> and I was just like, Nintendo history, I need it. So yeah, I immediately went on there. They were still offering it, uh, no business card, but they did offer to sign it for, uh, an upcharge. And I was like, okay. Oh, nice. Okay. That's good to know that you can get the sign. Did you get the signature? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah the card the card was very much a kickstarter thing because that that he only had a finite amount of so i got lucky to grab one um but yeah i i can't recommend it enough uh, it's a great read um it's the guy that does brawl in the family i think is the comic he did all the artwork and stuff inside of it so there's like little comics that they did inside that are based on that style that feel like updated versions of Howard and Nestor um, and little visual gags and stuff everywhere. Like his, you know, the story of the first time he got to play super Mario brothers, first time he got to mess with Rob and show it off and his travels to Japan and all of that. Uh, but you can go to the Kickstarter page for it. And as you said, they're still available to order. I think they're about 40 bucks. At least that's what it's listed as in the back. I'm sure there's probably some more for shipping and then the signature um, and all that. I think with sh shipping, it was, uh, I want to say it was about 40, 45, I think, because they charge 25 for autographs. 
So it came out to like 70 for me. Okay. So. That makes sense. It's, it's really worth getting. Um, I well, can't wait. It's hardbound. Was, yeah. Oh yeah. It's a great, it's a nice sturdy book. Uh, I'm curious to see your reaction when you get it and get a chance to read it. Cause it's, it's definitely one that's worth sharing. Yeah. I've read through the console wars. I've read through David chef's game over. I read that one like 12 times. Um, I've watched the Tetris, uh, as true as it can be. I need to watch um, that documentary on Apple plus Apple TV plus. Um, and I'm still, uh, I'm going to Ohio in a couple, couple weeks and I'm going to be reading Reggie's book both ways. So nice. Okay. Well, my last thing I've been playing is a game on my series X called neon abyss which is a side-scrolling twin-stick shooter where you can get like little eggs as you play around and as you clear rooms and things that come out, um, you can get little creatures that have different effects that help you. And there's like 400 and something different weapons and updates you can get while you play it each time randomized. Um, damn it, my friend Brent uh, got me hooked on this. He's like, oh, you should go ahead and get it. It was on sale. And I have put more time into this than I really should. I'm probably going to end up buying it again just so I can have it on my Steam Deck because so help me that is like it seems like the perfect Steam Deck game. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's called Neon Abyss. I, I highly recommend it. OK, yeah, I do love twin stick shooters. Yeah, it's it's a good one. Um, it took me a little bit to get used to the controls because you're moving with the left stick and you can turn it on and off to jump with the with the left stick as well. And I was like, well, I don't want to do that. I want to have normal jump for a You use the right stick to shoot in each direction. And they normally have trigger left trigger set for jumping. And I then realized it works better keeping the left trigger for jumping. I'd get why they do it that way. As you're jumping around, you can still use the right stick without taking your finger off of it to aim and shoot. Cause whenever you're, whatever way you point is where it shoots automatically. And it varies by the weapon of how often it shoots. And there's other abilities that build up on it. So as weird as it is, it is very well thought out control wise, how it's set versus, but they give you the option. If you really want to change it, you can. And if I get it on a steam deck, I might change that and make it like a back button or something. Cause then I can move around a little bit easier and do that. So who knows? Speaking of a uh, steam deck. Um... Mm hmm. Powerwall Simulator just had the free update, so there's more levels. Oh my god, I gotta go back and finish those. Uh, I just updated it. It's a 4 gigabyte update, so it's substantial. They're adding more storyline and lore and oh such. Lord. So once Chris comes back from his New York trip, we're gonna tackle that. Yeah, I was about to say, our uh, our good AI buddy, uh, Chris, is not with us today. He wasn't feeling well, plus he had, then he had a trip going on. Uh, I've messaged him and I was going to message you as well. Like I'd, I'd love for us to be able to get together online and play some games and do some stuff off of the show. Just, you know, actually hang out and do things the best we can It'd be fun. Yeah. All right. I'm always done for that. So let's go ahead and jump into the news. This is the meat and potatoes of the show. Um, and to start it off for a weird one, did you watch the, uh, the two Sonic the Hedgehog movies? I watched the first one. I have not watched the second one yet. Uh, I'm trying to get my wife to watch it with me. The second so one was really good. On I was, I mean, the first one, I was surprised they did so well. I really liked it. The second one, I was even more surprised they managed to keep up the quality and it was really good. But what really got me was the fact that they brought in Knuckles and it was voiced by Idris Elba. <laughs> and it worked so well because he's still an idiot. Like he, he just acts like a total idiot, but Knuckles is getting a spinoff series. that's in production now for Paramount plus that is based on those movies with Idris Elba coming back to voice the character. So I don't know yet if it's going to be the same CG live action mix or if they're going to go more animated, but it's definitely tied directly to that universe. I know they showed everybody's favorite, the cowboy hat. So. <laughs> So I'm like, well, does that mean he's going chaotic or does that mean he's just, you know, going off something else that of Sonic War that I can't remember? So I, was like, I want to know how long of a series it's going to be. Like, is this going to be a couple episodes as a quick reference? Are they doing a whole season? You know, because the way they made it sound is he's training somebody. 
So I was like, it sounds like it's going to be a good amount of episodes. Okay. I'll have to see. I don't know. I'm actually, I'm kind of hopeful for it just because they're doing a much better job stewarding the Sonic the Hedgehog movies than they initially were led to believe they were. So I've, I've kind of built up some faith in what they're doing. Does that makes sense. Speaking of uh, video game movies though, they said on the track that's going right now, I think after tomorrow, uh, mm-hmm. Super Mario movie will be the first $1 billion movie this year. Yep. That is nuts. Because it just <laughs> came out in Japan and it's doing gangbuster. So I was like, that's what we need. <laughs> oh, I thought it was already out in Japan. It just added. Oh, no, it just Lord. finally came out in Japan. They had to wait longer. And their wow. subway, their subways were full of the posters. Uh, my friend <laughs> who just came back from uh, Japan, he said every time he went into a place, they had these pamphlets just like, t- you know, talking about the movie. Oh, he sent you one? Uh, so he sent me one because eventually you, 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 you unfold it. And I was just like, man, that's awesome. Oh, that is. Like, they're just giving these out on the subway while we just give out like pricing plans on our subways and stuff. Man, I want one of those. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, I grabbed one. I was just like, just one? I'm going to have to scour what? the internet. I'm sure I'll have to pay an ungodly amount for that and the question block popcorn container oh, that don't forget certain the, people don't have. Forget the embossed one, too. That one's hard to get. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> that one I had to get twice because the first one came smashed. Is that a reference? No, more ironic. But. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, moving on to our next little bit here. Speaking of Sega, they've announced that they're actually purchasing game maker Rovio, the company that makes Angry Birds for $775 million. Uh, the acquisition expected to proceed by the end of September. And Sega wants to benefit from Rovio's mobile gaming expertise while helping them expand its IP across different formats. So... I mean, I guess, you know, Sega's still doing something, but it's kind of sad to see, like, it's good that Sega is going to try and get better help with mobile games and stuff and expand to that market. But the fact that just a few years ago, I think Rovio was, like, expected to sell for, like, billions. And they've already dropped down to $775 million, which is no chump change, but is definitely a drop in financial uh, revenue there. Hey, at least it's not mm-hmm. NFTs. Thank God. Oh, man. There's like a handful of places uh, of people that I'd rather them purchase than Rovio, but I guess if the next Sonic movie is going to have all the Angry Birds in it, then that's fine. Are we going to get a Angry Birds Sonic now? It's like just <laughs> a bird with a little, his hair and a Knuckles one that you throw. God, I'm not, I shouldn't give them ideas. <laughs> Rovio presents a Sonic Spinball 2 for mobile. Oh, no. I love spinball. That's as a side note, I'm on a kick trying to collect all the pinball games I can find. And of course, everyone's like, you got spinball? I'm like, yeah, of course I've got spinball. I think I have multiple copies of spinball. Like for a while, if you bought Genesis games anywhere, it somehow included a copy of spinball. Classic or modern as well? Both. Um, I'm trying to find any of the physical copies of different pinball games. Okay, because don't forget, um, Devil's Crush has two sequels on either PS4 or Switch that that limited run have been uh, publishing. So it's on Amazon still as a distributed title, but it's like Alien Crush, and then there's another one. It's a trilogy. They're basically making it, and all of them. It's just the show while I go to they're, Amazon. They're okay. fantastic. So. <laughs> I'll have to remember to look that up later. That's great. But yeah, there's a trilogy of the of the Devil's Crush series. So, Okay, cool. That would be a good one. All right. Well, uh, next up, do you like Star Trek? Yeah. Okay. So this is a good bit of news we've been wondering about for a while. If you watched uh, the later seasons of Star Trek Discovery, Michelle Yeoh had uh, her character of Captain Giorgio and later emperor Giorgio from the mirror universe her story is actually going to continue because she spoilers for the show sorry about this she got sent back to the past 
uh, because she had to. She was coming apart on a universal level, which was really painful looking. Uh, and that was supposed to lead to a Section 31 TV series. Well, it's come out now that it's going to be, instead of a show, they're going to be starting production later this year on a Section 31 movie. So we'll still get a good story, but it'll be more concise and kind of focused on that. So for they said, quote, for years we've looked, We've been looking forward to Michelle Yeoh one day returning to Star Trek, said David Staff, president of CBS Studios. Her powerful performance as Captain and Emperor Georgiou was a pivotal moment for the return of the franchise, and her portrayal resonated with fans around the world in a multitude of ways. We couldn't be prouder to join forces with Michelle once again as we continue to explore the Star Trek universe, celebrate its legacy, and chart a new a course for the future of the franchise. Why does it feel like they're trying to catch up to Star Wars with the amount of shows? I don't actually, I think Star Wars is trying to catch up with Star Trek, what it's done before. I don't know. They're they're neck and neck. I mean, the last two podcasts, almost every podcast has had a Star Trek announcement. That might also be because of me, (laughs) because I am a Star Trek nerd. If I moved my camera to the right of me, there's a whole big display of almost nothing but Star Trek ships and stuff. And yeah, <laughs> it was like, yeah, a lot of stuff got announced. You have the, the, the knuckles you got the new, that new star Trek. You have a totally spies reboot. Who saw that coming? What? I was just like, what <laughs> Uh big bang theory spinoff. I was like, oh, everything's God. coming back. Another one. What's the big bang theory spinoff. Who's please tell me it's not Howard. It's, un- it's under wraps right now. <laughs> God. I know uh, it came out later. I think, um, what was it? The the main character of it that played uh, Sheldon was the one that wanted to leave. The rest of the cast wanted to keep going. I guess he made the decision separate and then realized how much they all wanted to keep going. He's like, oh, they didn't like me for a while. I don't know. That, that show had some interesting, like I found some of it funny. Some of it was kind of demeaning towards nerds, but whatever. It's had some laughs. Anyways, um, couple it's actually been like what two weeks now because this happened right after our last episode so we'll go through this kind of quick it's old news for a lot of stuff but there was a nintendo indie world that occurred back on april 19th that's the 20 10 days ago good lord it's been a while um i'm just going to go down this list really quick if there's any specific titles you want to talk about feel free to pipe up or tell me to stop and we'll go into a little bit more but they went over the following games at maniko's night market coming september 26th my time at Sandrock, summer 2023. Plate Up, coming October 2023. Good one which there. That looks one fun. That one takes Overcooked to the next level, and I can't wait to get that one. I need to get more people to play Overcooked again. I have is, a couple is of this them. This one um, for people who are um, for people who are the 80s is now four decades old. For people who are like that now, oh, like me, um, this is Overcooked mixed with something like Tapper, like Root Beer Tapper. So now there's actual like patrons sitting there and you have to feed them, not just deliver food to an entity like an overcook. Oh, so I've watched gameplays of this uh, on steam and it's phenomenal. So ha- having it come to switch, I was like, perfect. perfect. Oh, this sounds hectic. Uh, Quilts and cats of Calico fall 2023 rift of the necro dancer 2023, which that one looks, looks, yeah, that one looks, looks really trippy. At- it's it's almost uh, even though it's not them, it's got that way forward almost quality look to it, mm-hmm. and it reminds me of like old games like um, Frequency and such. Um, well, it's from the it's makers the of format. the the Necro the um, I think it is Necro Dancer the uh, what were the the rhythm based crypt ones? They also made the Zelda version. I'm blanking yeah, on that. Yeah, there, there, there's Crypt of the of uh, there's just regular Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yeah, it's then, the same developers, I think. And then the second one is actually being offered as a free trial next week to get you in the Zelda mood. Oh, uh, even more. I have that one. So, I need to play it more. So that'll be free to play. And if people who just wanted a a quick Zelda adventure, you can actually turn off the rhythm on that second one. Oh, I'll probably stick with the rhythm. I think my big, I'll end up playing it on the OLED because I need some more games I can play handheld with that screen because that one felt like you should have headphones on when you play it. It just yeah, seems the, like the it's second one, done. they heard people's complaints that they wanted to play a Zelda game, but they didn't, they weren't very, um, 
rhythmically capable. They good, they, yeah, they, they weren't good with rhythm games. So they're like, oh, you have that. How do you tell us you're white without telling us you're white? <laughs> so I was like, that's kind of white. Nice. I can say that. Um, let's see. Uh, a little to the left, Cupboards and Drawers DLC, uh, June 2023. If you that's like, a, huh? if you like the game, uh, which is a funny game. If you like the game Save Room or Safe Room, uh huh, which basically just has the attache case organizing of oh, Resident yeah. Evil, um, this game's for you. A little to I left. love that they made that into a game. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm afraid if I get into those, I will never get out. I mean, you guys have already got me hooked on power washing for God's sake. I'm like doing all my chores. A little to the left is right up your alley because you're organizing batteries by type and stuff. If you can look behind me on the video version, you notice there's more stuff in this room that's been moved around. I'm already organizing a real space. I do not need to be distracted playing it on a Switch trying to do that. I'll never get this room done. By the next time we do this show, this desk will be in a different spot. I'm actually moving it to the other room. So it'll be out of the uh, the area with the TV. So he'll be staring at my proton pack and a door. <laughs> that's nice. Um, Shovel Knight. Uh, Pocket Dungeons Puzzler Pack DLC comes out spring 2023. Cult of the Lamb, Relics of the Old Faith update, which is out now. And I saw there's a, a physical copy of Cult of the Lamb out. I really want to try it. I, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to like that one. I haven't played it yet. Uh, Animal Well, coming out winter 2023. Had an interesting look to that one. Crime on Clock, <laughs> coming June 30th. This was cool. Tesla Grad 2 and then also a Tesla Ga Grad 1 remaster are both out now. That was some of their nice uh, surprise launches. I'm holding out on these two because I really hope they physically release them. I would love to get both of these as either a double pack or something for like limited runs, super rare, something. It yeah, seems like time. they should. Yeah, give yeah. them time. It will. The original Tesla Grad was offered by limited run, so I would think they would ask for it to do it again. Uh, we had Shadows Over Loathing, which is out now. Blasphemous 2, coming summer of this year. This I was excited for because I played the first one and loved it. Oxen Free 2, Lost Signals, coming July 12th. Uh, this is another kind of adventure game you could play uh, that I really got into on the Switch. And I remember playing it over a couple of flights and just loved the weird exploration and how you could mess with the radio and all, everything you could do with that one. Uh, Paper Trails coming August of this year. Little Kitty Big City <laughs> in 2024. Uh, it's just a cat running around. Like I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. Probably. It's just a sequel to Cat Lateral Damage. No, not really. <laughs> um, Chance of Senar, September 5th of uh, this year. Brotato later this year. Uh, which I've I've had this recommended. Another friend of mine here locally got a hold of a Steam Deck, and that's the game he's been stuck on. It's just playing Brotato, and he keeps telling me to get it. And I was like, I can't. I'm power washing. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I'll have to get that one. Uh, Escape Academy, the complete edition, comes out. That's going to be great for people who need a good online together game. Mm -hmm. So because you you can either play by yourself, but that's like playing Mist it's better off played with a bunch of people because you're all walking around the room trying to solve the puzzles. That's a, that sounds like one we should play the, all of us on the show together, <laughs> stream that or something or record it. Yeah. That'd be sweet. That'd be hilarious. Lots of cursing in that probably. Yeah. Uh, five nights at Freddy security breach is out now and I'm still surprised they're still making five nights at Freddy games. I've seen so many ridiculous Five Nights well, at Freddy Toys, like yeah, recently. I don't know if you've seen, but they're thinking that uh, because that movie was announced that the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is going to overtake Mario. That's what people are thinking. Oh, there is I don't no so. chance. I don't think so with a Not billion a dollars. Chance. But, um, Will it hey, be popular? more Maybe. successful video game movies, let's do this. Yeah. I'm also now, that. this last one, this I was excited for. I've been wanting this game for a while, and I love seeing it again. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk coming out August 18th. This is the rebirth of Jet Grind Radio that I have wanted. It's got the similar cell shaded art style with the simplified 3D polygon models, the great music, the jumping around, you know, like the skating and inline skating and all that with graffiti while avoiding the cops. I mean, it's basically Jet Grind Radio without the license. 
It's a, it's that spiritual successor, as they always say. Um, I will double dip on this. I will get it the day it comes out digitally. And if there's a physical copy that comes out, I will get that as well. Like I want this game. Uh, Are you interested in this one at all? No. uh, The Jet Series series has never been my cup of tea. Um, I think it's because uh, I kind of got very burnt out on all those skating games that came out during that generation. So it's like I can't get back into it. Not even the new Tony Hawks. I, I was just it like, was I can't. it was very different though. Like Jet Grind was not like a Tony Hawk reading tricks and stuff quite I, like every that. Time, was... Every time I tried to play it uh-huh. uh, on like the original and Dreamcast, it was just trying to do circular motions to spray paint, and I was just like, "Can I just have uh... a touch screen?" <laughs> you know that would have been. I wish they had brought that back and made that like a DS or 3DS game. I th- I think even during I think during the DS. It would have been really good because you could use the simplified cell shaded models to run the DS. Here's hoping. And if Uh it happens, then I have willed it to existence and I will take all the credit. Um, Here's hoping, especially with the, the Genesis um, classics being online with switch and Mm -hmm. the Genesis mini. And the fact that they actually had a survey of what, what you'd like to see next. And almost everybody universally said dreamcast mini. Um, you know, here's hoping they do like a Dreamcast uh, collection for Switch, but M2 gets their hands on them and That'd adds in stuff like touchscreen support for like the Jet series. So I was like, that would be nice. Or, or at least give like a quality of life where like you can choose to just have it automatically do it. Like you get there and hit a button and it does the graffiti if you so choose, just let you explore and play around. I'd be fine with that. Like I would probably keep yeah. the motions on because I always remember those and I'm fond of them. But if that's what's stopping you from playing it, turn them off. It's not that big a deal. You know, if, if the switch is just like, we're going to be around a couple more years and you're already this old, like that's the only way you're going to get people to keep coming back is if you like, Oh, Hey, we have, remember this game. We brought it back again. <laughs> they could do it. So, yeah. Um, it wasn't a bad Nintendo indie world. Uh, I wasn't super excited for a lot of the stuff, but I'm, I mean, I did hear a lot of good things from people. How did you feel about it? Like, was it something you really enjoyed? Um, I always like how they present it because they kind of um, also interview the developers mm-hmm. and tell them how they were going through. So like the, my time in San Rock is a sequel to my time in Porsche where they've listened to all the feedback and kind of made all these, um, improvements and quality of life stuff and just gave you a new area to play in. So I've always liked that. And usually there's something that hits for everybody for you. It was bomb rush for me. It was played up where I was like, Oh my God, finally, I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> um, so it's nice seeing those and, or that they were even working on a remastered version of Tesla grad was pr- very, that neat. was great. I still follow the creator. Cause I just, I like seeing his stuff on Twitter and stuff to hear him he'll show off like, here's how I tried to animate this. Or this is what I did when I first designed it. Like the guy's really friendly to talk to. So it's, it's kind of, it's great to see that. So far from what I've seen, unless it's the companies themselves, Nintendo's the only one that constantly wants to remind everybody of all the indie games. So yeah, I do appreciate that. It's, it's a really good way to, to run those on the switch as well, because it's a nice collection you can get that doesn't tax a lot of the system. You can be creative. They get, you know, the ability to play those. And even if they're not exclusive, just that portability, unless it's a Steam Deck. And even then, a Steam Deck is nice, but it's trickier to just get it onto a TV. You know, you have to have another computer basically to make it easier to play it that way. And I just like dropping the dock in and being done, you know? Yeah, I had to pay separate for my Steam Dock. I got a Steam Dock as well, but it's still... I still can't get it to scale correctly on the TV, like it has issues with that. Like I can play it on there. It works really well with a 1080p screen. Is it um is it a third party or is it Steam? No, it's official. It's theirs. Uh, Cuz I remember mine scaled perfectly, but then when I went to desktop mode, I had to reset I had to set the resolution so it appeared on my 4K TV properly. Hmm. I got to look and see cuz I tried to play I was playing Vampire Survivor and tried to put it on the TV and it only took up like a small section and I was like what the crap? So I went and looked oh. to try and scale it, try to look at options. And it just, I'll figure it out eventually. Cause one thing I did get, uh, and this, I tried this with or without it. It doesn't actually affect the signal, but I got a 16 by one HDMI switch. 
which is great. Dude, I cannot recommend this thing enough. I'll have to send you pictures. I have so many things. Right now, I have my PS5, my Series X, a Vita TV, my Switch dock, a Wii U, a GameCube, um, my Analog Pockets dock, my <laughs> Steam Decks dock. Um, that's eight things right there. And then I had some other stuff hooked up. like, And I still have so many more ports. But they'll automatically switch or I can manually switch it. But that that's made it really nice to kind of keep those around and try and make it plug and play. So I'm hoping I can figure it out here soon. All right, let's move on to the next little bit we have here. And this one kind of caught me by surprise. Like I'm I like Pokemon Go and I like Monster Hunter. Did not expect those two to ever come together because Capcom announced Monster Hunter Now, uh, which is coming September 2023. This is a Pokemon Go style mobile game being made by Niantic, the same company that makes Pokemon Go, that will allow you to hunt monsters in the real world like you catch Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Um, they didn't show off like, any videos or anything about how the game will play, but they did show. They had like a uh, an open beta you could sign up for, which I did sign up. I'm going to see if I can get into that just to see what the heck this is going to be. I heard the invites went out, so maybe oh, maybe, we're away, maybe we're away too. I don't to look, know. Uh, when I see this, uh, at this point, uh, <laughs> Niantic, Niantic is treating their uh, proprietary technology, whatever you want to call it, as Tetris 99. They're having uh theme packs so okay let's recap yeah. so you had the original one ingress which is an anime now what um <laughs> then you had pokemon go then you had harry potter then you had um and, and now cur- concurrently you have nba 2k <laughs> you can walk around and and meet what? nba superstars and what? look it up it's Sickening. I don't want to. And then now we have Monster Hunter now. And I'm like, how many? Like, I know it's just a new coat of paint over your technology, Niantic, but I, are you okay? Could you have people looking at all those servers at the same time? Like, there's a lot. I remember they also, I don't remember, I didn't hear if you mentioned it, but like Pikmin Bloom is another one they do that uses some of the similar stuff. But thankfully, that one's not technically catching, so it's not so bad. Like, I don't need to be like, yeah. pull over, I need to catch this thing. Like, it's They're making so many of these. I'm like, dang, Niantic, what are you... Yeah, okay. so we're, we're going to keep an eye on that one. I'm curious to see how it goes. But there yeah. was some other Capcom news that we had that, uh, that you were going to bring up. So why don't you let us know what we got here? So uh, much like the, um, the heralded blue check apocalypse, 420... <laughs> Also brought us the Street Fighter VI showcase featuring Little Wayne. Um, he was just there to say the game's awesome and to introduce the developers and creators. So I was like, that's all I wanted from him. That's, that's great. Fine. Um, but some inter- interesting stuff. They really went in hard and t- talking about world tour mode. Mm-hmm. Um, going into the amount of customization you can do, which is beyond anything I've I've seen in a while since games like Black Desert, where you could just sit oh, down wow. and do the width, the opaqueness, the hue of just about everything. You can have eyes two different colors. It's it's insane the amount of stuff you can do. And these things will appear as your character in real-time cutscenes. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool to see that. Just make sure your character looks good, because otherwise you're going to... Uh, if you make your hair like I did, too luminescent, because I tried to make Princess Peach, you won't be able to really see much of the background because it's too shiny um but they <laughs> they went into that they just talked about how um the versus mode and uh, online would work a little bit more they said they do have a mode for people who are um blind so it's entirely audio based of how close you are what kind of attacks you do um so there's there they showed off really? in the uh, showcase all these different tones that would play so that somebody who can't see can actually play street fighter, which I, to me is insane. And I'm like, oh, wow, good, good on them. I can't wait to see somebody like delve into that. Um, and then they went into uh, talking about uh, what they have planned next. They showed off four new characters. 
Um, most people, if they followed the leaks, mm-hmm. kind of knew who was coming, but not when. So we announced that they were getting uh, AKI, which is uh, a new a new character. Ed, which is also a new character. Uh, the first one we're getting is Rashid. So Rashid's coming back uh, this year. And then towards next spring, we'll get Akuma. So everybody was... Akuma. You know, and he looks like he's basically just came out of the jungle. So <laughs> Beast mode Akuma. But uh, yeah, then they ended it saying, no, we're not giving out any more betas. Uh, we've had our tests. We're good to go. Uh, how about a demo, guys? So the, the demo is out on everything that's not Switch. And then <laughs> their big thing is if you spend, like, say, your whole entire weekend making a character... Uh, you can carry over that character, so you don't have to make it again. So, I nice. have to try that just to see what craziness I can make. It's <laughs> <whew>. <laughs> remember, remember what you do, and remember to hit the undo button right be, right after you switch something. Otherwise, you'll lose which of the thirty eight eye shapes you did, which of the forty five haircuts you did. It's it's easy to get lost. I'm going to make a spreadsheet and just keep updating it in Excel while I'm doing this. <laughs> Well, I look forward, especially seeing what people did in games like uh, Dreams, um, Soul Calibur 6. I can't can't wait to see what people get done in this because I know to get clicks to their website or to their account, they're going to post like, this is what everything must be to look like that character. And I'll be right there like, all right, I'm going to make that character. (laughs) It's going to be a race to the bottom to see you can make the most ridiculous looking weird character or who can make a person look like a penis first. <laughs> I'm sure they'll do it. All right. What else we got? Uh, Capcom news wise. Um, well, they just announced on, on their Japanese account on Twitter though, that uh, the battle Mega Man battle network collection uh, has sold over 1 million units. And for that's just a collection lot. of Game Boy Advance games, uh, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. And, you know, with, Capcom Arcade Stadium, the first stadium, the second stadium, and now this all doing gangbusters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hopefully this puts and fighting collection, of course. Uh, hopefully this puts Capcom in the mood to like, wow, we can, you know, we have a whole farm of cows we can milk. Let's just go to our next legacy collection and 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 milk it. So I was like, yeah, bring it. Give yeah, I just beat them up collection. Anything. Yeah, I just I wish they would release more of them with physical options because like that. The fighting collection, I was glad they did that. And of course, you know, we've got the different cap, uh, Street Fighter collections and stuff that they came out with that were actual physical ones. I debated, I'm still debating if I'm going to get the Mega Man Battle Network because I never, I never was a fan of those games because it was kind of out of my, I wasn't part of that age group that really got into those. I was more of the actual like action platformer Mega Man instead of just feels more like an RPG. They, they sold out of, the, they actually sold out of their first print run. Oh sh! So, so it's it's extremely hard to get, and the only place that had it left was GameStop. So, oh, damn. so I rolled the dice and and got a sealed copy instead of a uh, stickered copy. So I'm happy about that. Um, but they said they're going to print more in Japan. But I'm like, you didn't say anything about US, so I'm going to go pick up a copy right now. I guess I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. I guess my my hesitancy is going to bite me in the butt on that. It's one of the few. Like I haven't seen many things go out of print, but. Usually the out of print stuff is always NIS America, certain Capcom games and Alice. Yeah. Those usually go pretty quick. Or if it's a Mario 3d collection, uh, <laughs> it just disappears in the world. That thing used is like 80 bucks. Now it's ridiculous. Uh, all right. Well, next up Netflix has announced it will be ending DVD rentals this year after 25 years and we'll wind down DVD.com. For one, I didn't realize Netflix even was still doing DVDs. I thought they stopped there years ago. DVD.com was a website. Apparently they had it. Um, the final discs will be sent out September 29th, 2023. I guess that person gets to hold on to it for a while. And they have to, do they have to send it back? Do they get to keep it? I wonder. I want to know what the last one's going to end up being. But they shared a couple of fun little stats that were just pointless, but kind of entertaining. The first DVD they shipped was Beetlejuice on March 10th, 1998, which interesting choice. Number of DVDs shipped is 5.2 billion plus. Uh, the most popular title was The Blind Side. It was Sandra Bullock. Yep. Yeah. Like why? 
Uh, number of supported genres is 20 main and 530 subgenres. And they had over 40 million unique subscribers over the years. And I remember we had Netflix for the DVD option for a while, but as soon as the streaming popped up where I, I had it on 360 because that was the only one you could have it built in. And then I had this, I still have the streaming discs for PS3 and for, for uh, for the Wii. I still have both of those with their cases yep. and stuff. I kept, I kept mine too. Cause I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, these are relics of the past. I'll keep these. That's yeah. That's why I kept them. I was like, these are pointless, but they're kind of funny to look at. So still have them, but yeah, that's uh, the end of that. A uh, little bit of sad news here. James Carter, Ka- uh, Cathcart. He's the voice of professor Oak, Gary Oak, James and Meowth is retiring from voice acting because of an advanced form of cancer has spread to his throat. Um, and he's been voice acting for 25 years now. So, uh, I mean, and I, I, one thing he's been doing for so long, he gets to retire, but it's not a good reason to do so. So, so I remember yeah, back when the, Pokemon, unfortunate. yeah, very much so. Cause I mean, especially for a voice actor, that being where the cancer goes, you know, that's, that's literally a worst case scenario for a lot of that. So, yeah. Hopefully he recovers. Who yeah. knows? Maybe if, if somehow he re- he's able to overcome it or recover, maybe he can get back into voice acting. Um, but this might just be, I'm sure he's probably hopefully doing well. I mean, I don't know if he's got paid well, much for the, those roles. Part of me wondered if he has the same throat cancer that Val Kilmer has. Oh, good point. Um, so it's one of those, like if he can get better, he can get better. So it's like, okay, fingers crossed for both of you guys now. Yeah. Well, Val Kilmer got, better but not quite like he's he's done for a lot of stuff i think his his appearance in top gun that took a lot of cgi and you know bringing back his voice by like ai means and some other stuff but yeah i think he's he's pretty well out of that one um so a little bit of interesting news in the toy aisle that came up uh and one of our discord people sent this to us as well which i appreciate Mattel and Hasbro have made a licensing pact to co- uh, create co-branded toys and games with tie-ins to both brands' movies that are coming out this summer, which includes Barbie and Rise of the Beast from Transformers. Some examples are going to be a Barbie-themed Monopoly from Hasbro, and then an Uno game and Hot Wheels with Transformers themes coming from Mattel. So we're getting Transformer Hot Wheels. Which I, I, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't see how we didn't get a Barbie themed Monopoly already. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, they were owned by different companies. So I guess that kind of makes I sense. I will say, uh, I, you could see the writing on the wall. I was at Target the other day and they had these Hasbro themed dog toys, chew toys. And of course, <laughs> Op- and of course, Optimus Prime was sold out. Um, oh. but, but they also had like the operation guy, the dog could pull on. Um, and Mr. Potato enough, Head, I think, even though we don't have a dog, uh, right now, is, is they had a My Little Pony chew toy. <laughs> what? And I was just like, that's just we're teaching, never kid, see- teaching a dog to destroy your kid's toys. And I was like, we're never gonna see this again. And even more, it was, uh, it was the character Rainbow Dash that can fly. So you, it was a launcher, you pull it back its body and you can launch it. So you can, you can play that with your kids outside because you can launch it like a rocket. And I was just like, what? what kind of cross promotion is this? What are they going to do next? And now I got my answer. All right. <laughs> Playing with your kids with a dog toy. That's great. If oh. we've known anything, it's if they make any Barbie games, buy it because then it'll be worth $1,300 in a couple of years. Probably. I'm kind of interested in the Transformers Hot Wheels. Like they've done something similar where they'll have really accurate uh, non-transforming vehicles of certain ones. And if they're willing to go outside the normal scope of just having a Volkswagen Beetle and the semi truck and stuff like that, they could make some kind of fun Hot Wheels based off of different Transformers characters that I'd be down to get. You know, make me a, what was it, the G2 green and purple Megatron tank or, you know, some of those. Make me something weird. Uh, give me Look Hot Rod. promotion with, uh, what's that game? Um, is that Machina game for Switch or. <laughs> Or give me a, a kid's version of Transformers with that partners with Custom Robo. And then we'll oh, talk. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man. Um, other, other news we've had, uh, when you were a kid and you were homesick or had the day off from school or something, one thing I think most of us our age probably remember popping up on TV that became kind of an issue, especially here uh, in Panama city where I live, because they would actually come here was Jerry Springer. Um, the guy that would always have the most kind of outrageous shows and bringing on guests and there'd always be fights guaranteed. It was basically wrestling the talk show is what it, it seemed like. Um, but Jerry Springer has passed away at 79 uh, from what I believe was a form of colon cancer. Uh, it yeah, wasn't quite clear of exactly again. what it was, yeah. um, but he's had kind of a questionable history in those years since for the way he treated different uh, minority groups and stuff like that for kind of exploitative reasons. So it's some people aren't too upset about it. <laughs> I I think it's, it's twofold. Um, yeah. If you watch the dark side of the nineties, which is a documentary mm-hmm. on Hulu, um, they have one that's strictly about trash TV and right. they go into Jerry Springer. And the thing that came to light was just, you know, he, he was, he was going against Mari Povich and he decided I'm going to do it just a straight, straight talk show. And then they had one outburst and the producers are like, can you do more of this? Because this is what's making us money. So, you know, when you hear the word, um, you just have to bring in weird stuff and we'll give you more money. He was like, okay, we'll see how long this works. Um, I, for one have seen his, uh, if you focus more on his, um final word or or whatever he called it at the mm-hmm. end um way back in the 90s he was very progressive about trans rights and everything so he had a brilliant speech from decades ago that uh even rings truer today of just like you know love is love type of language so i was just like all right i was just like i'll look at him the person and mm-hmm. not what he did, because like some of the stuff he did, yeah, was insane. Yeah. But then so was Geraldo. So I was like, whatever. True. I, I didn't realize until later that he was a politician before he did the show. And originally when he was doing the show, it was strictly political stuff they was talking about mm-hmm. before that, before it transitioned. So very weird. So but speaking of weird, I never thought I would say this, but Twisted Metal is getting a TV series on Peacock coming on July 27th. It's a 10 episode series starring Anthony Mackie, which you might know as Falcon and the new Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Stephanie Beatrice, who is from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Encanto. <laughs> like, and let us not forget the body of Samoa Joe for Sweet Tooth. Really? It's his body, 100%, but they were like, you can't talk. We're going to just put in a different voice. That makes sense. <laughs> so I was like, all right. But it's described in this. I don't know if if you would fit this with it. Because you remember, did you ever play the uh, Twisted Metal games? Yeah, I played all of them. And then I played Vigilante 8 as well. Yeah, Vigilante 8 was a whole different beast. I love that one. Um, But they described this show as a high octane action comedy. And I don't know if I would really consider like some parts of the game I could consider funny. Some of it was meant to be kind of like morbid and dark, especially Twisted Metal Black on the PlayStation 2. I think that was the darkest action comedy. So basically it's it's Fast and Furious 9 and 10. Basically, Uh, from the official synopsis, Twisted Metal follows, quote, a motor mouthed outsider who was offered a chance at a better life, but only if he can successfully deliver a mysterious package across a post apocalyptic wasteland. So it's Postmates post-apocalyptic. <laughs> that sounds like the season one of Mandalorian. <laughs> Deliver me the baby. I'll give you a chance of a better life, but if you can successfully deliver this mysterious package across the post a post-empire I wish, I wish wasteland. <laughs> I wish to see the baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. They released a teaser trailer, and I've I haven't watched it yet because I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch this. Um, I watched it. That's how you get to see Samoa Joe's body and you get to see <laughs> Anthony Mackie saying, are you ready for this? Of course, they're going to have him say, are you ready for this? Uh, I just. 
I don't know how this is going to be the antithesis to the Mario movie for like good quality and success. There's just this is the opposite. This is the penance we must pay for how far Mario's going. <laughs> this is our uh, our our judgment. Well, this is a Sony property. Uh, technically, this is a Sony property, so <laughs> their their benchmark right now is Uncharted. So. Uh, I'll, I'll put their benchmark on uh, the last of us. That was okay. Yeah. No, the last of us was then. really well done. They, they understood it. They I, got I, it. I forgot about that. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it ebbs and flows. So you have uncharted was done here and then the last of us. So it's okay. Yeah. I haven't seen uncharted yet. That's one I'm, I don't know if I want to watch. Cause I'm like, I just, I don't see him as Nathan Drake. Like <laughs> he just, I think he's a good pick still, but. I know everybody would have preferred Nathan Fillon, but well, he, I think he's gotten there. too old for that. That 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 time has passed. I think he's getting up there. So, but we have other movie news that I wanted to kind of bunch together here. A couple of surprise announcements because we had uh, CinemaCon that happened recently. Yeah, and these were only in a sizz- uh, this first one was only in a sizzle reel to give people enough hope. So. Yeah, but it was officially announced. But Beetlejuice two. Is announced as being in development by Warner Brothers. Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder are supposedly returning for their roles with a possible role for Jenna Ortega, who's coming from the Netflix Wednesday, ser- Wednesday yeah. series. The last I heard, she was supposed to be uh, Lydia's daughter, and Winona returns as, you know, Lydia, obviously. Okay. So uh, I'm okay if it's, if it's made as a continuation. I'm all right with that. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, with our like watch uh, Winona die and have to deal with, you know, dealing with Beetlejuice while trying to contact her daughter or something. Well, I think, I think uh, the um, the caretaker, the one that was in the paranormal side, uh-huh. smoked a lot. She she passed away recently. Uh, right. But uh, I think everybody else could technically come back. Oh wow! She, okay. What's Gina Davis doing? You know. <laughs> Not much. Not much. Yeah. We'll have to see. Uh, Transformers 1 was announced by Paramount Animation, Hasbro, and E1 coming July 19th, 2024. The voice cast for this one, because this is supposed to be a younger origin story for a lot of the Transformers. So Chris Hemsworth is Optimus Prime. Brian Tyree Henry is Megatron. Scarlett Johansson is Alita. Keegan-Michael Key is Toad and now Bumblebee. <laughs> John Hamm, which was a surprise, is Sentinel Prime. Lawrence Fishburne is Alpha Trion. I will laugh if they don't even change the voice for Bumblebee. And it just sounds like Toad again with a <laughs> metallic metallic echo. I, I have a feeling he'll use a different voice, but it's just, it's really funny that you're going to be like, you're going to look at Toad and you're going to look at Bumblebee and be like, those are the same person. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll probably uh, link you to the Twitter post of somebody... As soon as somebody imagines them together. Yeah, they'll just have Toad with like a optim like a bumblebee face on it or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Like I'm curious to see about this one. I love the fact somebody and I don't know how they let this get out, their marketing group actually put out an announcement saying this is the first Transformers animated movie, and everyone's like No. <laughs> like That's because if people wanna don't want to remember the other one because it makes them cry. I want to remember. I love that movie. I almost bought it again today. I have it on like almost every format. You've got the touch. Yep. I even have the soundtrack on on vinyl, which has that that song. It also has Weird Al's Dare to be Stupid. It does. It's great. That whole album, it's wonderful to listen to, but it is so 1980s. I told my kids, like, when I play this, we are just an 80s household for a while, for the next hour. Um, Good music though, but I have I've got that movie on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, digital. Uh, I'm looking for a laser disc, trying to find that. So it's like me and the wizard. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I want to find the Japanese laser disc because it had like the really nice painted artwork on there from the Transformers. That's some stuff I'd hang up on the wall in those album covers. Nice. A little bit less likable, but interesting at least, is Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer that came out. Uh, This one finally released to show more of the series that's coming out. But most importantly, we finally have an accurate Unicron, which is great. 
Uh, you actually see him starting to devour a planet. Um, they have what looks like Scourge, uh, which is a weird take on his character, but Scourge was one of the sweeps from back in the 84 movie that were reformatted by Unicron. A couple of the old Decepticons got reformatted along with Megatron, who became Galvatron. Um, there's a famous scene where Galvatron is sitting there and uh, Unicron is transforming in front of him. You see like his chest open up and the little parts. Something like that happens in the trailer, but it almost looks like eyes. And I'm kind of hoping that's not Unicron's eyes because they look silly. Um, but we got to see a couple more of the characters. Uh, there's been a bit of a controversy with Wheeljack with his design. Um, like, okay, if you're going to, if you're going to be upset by a character design, I get that. A lot of people will be annoyed by stuff. Like there's no need to kind of mock the people that are upset about it. They're not like, they shouldn't be like angry to that point. But when we had a really nicely done G1 accurate Wheeljack, in the last movie this is attached to Bumblebee, we kind of wonder why we're getting one that doesn't really have the little, you know, the way his head was shaped and has these big ass goofy glasses. Why does a robot need glasses? <laughs> it's just adjust the eye. <laughs> like, um, It's just a well, weird design choice that isn't necessary. I'm kind of excited that it's at least not Michael Bay touching it. And you can know it is. Tell- no, it's not him this time. Yeah, he took over the Bumblebee series. No, 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 I mean he's not part of Rise of the Beasts. It's a, it's a totally different guy. There's, there are five people wrote the screenplay, but he's uh, not attached to this one. I have to look and see. I thought he was okay. He's not directing it, thankfully. Because people, because people were saying uh, the different director it showed because the Transformers stopped being so darn shiny all the time. And got a little bit uh, grayer. So then uh, when you see the trailer, like you can easily focus on the um, robots without getting blinded by the light and stuff like that with all the lens flares. Yeah, it's still his production company and he's still a producer on it. So I guess that's kind of where his his fingers get into the mix. But he's probably like you have to include explosions and they're like, all right. Right. You just, you need to have some lady washing a car and we have to film it. And then. Well, that was the other uh, thing. Other than the, the, the kid in it and his family, there really wasn't too much more to focus on with the humans. So I was like, fingers crossed. It's, you know, more robots than humans. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping cause like Bumblebee, I thought was really well done. Um, they brought back Bumblebee being a Volkswagen Beetle like he originally was. Cause Michael Bay famously didn't want that because he thought the Beetle was a stupid car. That's why he, in the first movie, he had the Camaro, which was more of a, a manly car, you know, a boy's car, as he put it, you know, hit the door of the of the Beetle and push it away like it was nothing. And I'm like, that's really going against what Bumblebee's intent was. He was always meant to be small and unassuming and a scout. So a Volkswagen Beetle fit really well for that. Um, so when that came back in Bumblebee, I was happy to see it kind of disappointed at the end when he turned back into a Camaro and I was like, ah, fine. Well, at least we got most of the movie out of it. Um, Prime still looks right. He's the flat front truck, but he was one of the least I really had a problem with in the Bay movies because he still I'm had the feeling. They, had the, they kind of came up with the idea that when he's not talking, he looks like he's supposed to. So he don't have the weird. Right. That was a good concession. Like they could have the animated face so people could get that he was talking without doing that now on the current ones they've redesigned his face and actually uh based it off of uh cullen's face the original voice actor from Optimus prime so it's kind of referencing his look on prime's face now under the mask which you know that's because he's not voicing him all the time but that's a nice homage to him that could continue on because he's like 81 now you know, like we talked about earlier, Chris Hemsworth is doing the voice. Like everyone's like, why isn't Collins do it? Peter Collins doing it. Well, he's 81. He can't really do a younger Optimus voice. Like it's not going to work without being digital and being helped out. And at that point, you're kind of they need to let that that casting go. Like he had his oh. time, you know, move on. So are they going to use uh, if I remember my Transformers lore, which I don't uh-huh. know too much of. Oh, I'll correct you get- if you're wrong. 
Are they going to use AI so they can have Unicron voiced by Orson Welles? No. Um, Dang. <laughs> no, that would be hilarious. Let me see, because I was looking at it. Um, Careful, you're going to see who uh, Pete Davidson voices. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was because he's he's been voiced by a number of people, but um, oh dang, now I can't find it. I keep forgetting John Noble was the one from Transformers Prime. Yes, we're looking up stuff live on the internet. Coleman Domingo is going to be the voice of Unicron. Now, do you uh, did you ever watch um, Fear the Walking Dead? I have not. All right, well, real quick, if you've got it on there, I'm going to throw this picture up into Discord so you can get a look at him. I can hear his voice every time I see him. He's got a very unique voice, and I think it's going to work really well for Unicron. I guarantee they're going to digitize it, pitch it down, all that fun stuff. But I'm I'm not upset. I think that's a good voice casting. I think he'd do, he'd do good for this. You looking it up? <laughs> I think Unicron should have been uh, Giancarlo Esposito, though. But then you have to blow off half his face, and then... <laughs> well, yeah, see, it works. Yeah, but no, they take his whole head off. They, they blow Unicron's head off, and it becomes a moon. Can't have that. And then they'll be like, that's no moon, and then they'll have a crossover. <laughs> that's, that's a meth dealer. <laughs> oh, man. So, do you recognize him? Oh, I didn't look up the... Oh, I thought you were looking. I thought you were looking at your phone. I was looking at Giancarlo. I was like, he's a better guy. Um, <laughs> voice of Unicron. Well, I sent it to you. I sent it on Discord. I put it in the uh, the podcast chat. His actual picture from uh, the promotional work they put out. Because he was one of the main characters in Fear the Walking Dead, where I first kind of came to know him. And uh, I'm trying to remember some of his other roles. Oh, I've never seen him before in my life. Really? Wow. Okay. Well, look him up sometime. Um, very recognizable guy to me. Could have had Keith David, too. He's not doing anything. Who? <laughs> Keith David. Keith David? No, I think he's busy with the new Gargoyles TV series. So never mind. That's true. I think, well, actually, Keith David would be a good Unicron. I'll give you that. All right, well, let's talk about our last movie trailer, and this is kind of a, a doozy for stuff. The Flash finally released a, a new trailer that was more Batman-focused than all the other ones. But they said the line. They uh, they had Michael Keaton say, you know, do you want to get nuts? Then let's get nuts. And a much calmer version of what he said in the original, I think, 89 Batman film. I believe that was the year that came out. It looked uh, like it hurt for him to say that. I'm sure the paycheck did not hurt as much. <laughs> this is basically it was uh, the new Flash trailer was basically Birdman 2. <laughs> um, all the controversy around the actors and things aside, the movie is looking really good to me. Like I I'm, think, yeah, I I don't think he was hesitant to play him at all. I think he was more excited because. For somebody who even went up to a graduation ceremony and said, hey, guys, remember, I'm Batman. Right. Like that. He's one of those like Mark Hamill that embraced the character that brought him into the forefront of of Hollywood. So he's not going to forget where he came from. And the fact that they're like, you want to reprise that role because people are going to go nuts to see what you do again. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're already picking apart the trailer and they're like, hey, look, in the beginning, you see the suit that he uses guns. <laughs> so you have to and, throw back uh, to his year one stuff and they've got and, and then you're just so like, much. you know unless you're into funko pops or lego then you're just like okay what what are you going to <laughs> what are you going to bring me um to take my mind off the flash other than batman yeah uh do whatever you can not to look at the funkos and the lego sets because whoever's in their marketing department does not care about spoilers because they've just blatantly put out a main villain and a lot of the plot twist with it. And you're just like, why did you guys put these out already? Like you could have put out the toys of the Batman of the flash and stuff like that. But the other characters, you should have waited until after the film came out. Like, why is that so difficult? 
uh, I know this movie's been in development for so long. Um, it's their best excuse, uh, though, to give this whole thing a reboot, though. True. I mean, Flashpoint, that's the whole purpose of it, is to kind of restart everything. DC did it with the New 52, which this was kind of their first big uh, restart of the DC universe in the comics since Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, which is another really nice hardback cover collection I have over on my shelf, too. All the artwork on the cover by Alex Ross. Get it. It's really good. Wasn't a bad... um wasn't a bad CW special either. Surprisingly not bad. Um, and also the one and only time Kevin Conroy got to be Batman in a live action and it ended up being an evil ass Batman too, which was great. Uh, I'd rather remember that as his final Batman thing than whatever the kill the justice league is going to end up being. Oh, so I don't know uh, to end it off. Are you, excited for the flash movie is this one you're still looking forward to seeing um uh, it's hard to say like uh i think because this one's gonna finally be part of james gunn's vision mm-hmm. is i'll probably go see this one because shazam they were just saying well it's done we have to release it and now it's the biggest bomb in dc history <laughs> so i was just like eh, never mind i'm not gonna go see that uh i'll watch that on uh the um discovery or sorry max yeah, whatever the and, hell it is uh, this week. So Max, I'll watch it on. And uh, but I was like, this other one, I was just like, there may be a little bit of FOMO there if I if I don't see it at some point. So I was like, yeah, I'll watch this one. Um, I think it's coming extremely close to a bunch of movies. I think every week in June is supposed to be a huge blockbuster. So it's gonna have some insane competition because i think even transformers rise of the beast is right up against the flash so oh okay they're like within seven days of each other so like uh, uh okay well, definitely i guess that's two weeks of me watching movies <laughs> i'm gonna go see the flash in theaters probably gonna go see it in imax when it comes out um definitely see that probably gonna go see trans uh, rise of the beasts in imax because even though i'm questionable of whether it's gonna be good or not because some of these transform movies the past couple of years have hurt me <laughs> Um, I would say that one, go though, see if you have a AMC theater and they have that Dolby cinema, mm-hmm. go see it that way because those theaters, they make the base so hard that something like that, when like a transformer jumps would be amazing. I don't think we have an M- uh, AMC theater. Like I saw anywhere both near Avengers here. movies in Dolby cinema and it was incredible because every time, like a hammer hit somebody in the face, uh, Thor's hammer or anything like that. It was like a huge boom. And I was just like, all right, okay. Now I know which movies I need to pay the extra for and which one I just go see it. Yeah. The only AMC theater we have left is the one that was rebuilt in our mall that was destroyed by a hurricane. So it is like cheap kind of low end, like dollar theater style. Like it shows newer movies and it's good for just going for like family groups and stuff. But there's no actual really good AMC within like a hundred miles of here. It's ridiculous. Oh, like Panama city has not rebuilt anything movie wise. Like we used to have three really good theaters and they were supposed to be building a new IMAX here on this side of the bridge. So we don't have to drive all the way out to the beach to go out there. Cause it's like an hour drive to get to that one. And they keep stalling on construction. And then the other good one that we had, uh, of course, because this is the freaking Bible belt, uh, it was rebuilt as a church. <sighs> it was such a good theater. It was the one I got to see all my Star Wars movies in, which I will say is the closest thing I've had to a religious experience, getting to watch all three films, three nights in a row at midnight showings all by myself. <laughs> so. Hmm. All right. Well, let's jump into our last story for the show tonight. This one's going to be a little bit of a discussion going on, but. This one is in regards to the UK regulators vote to block the Microsoft merger with Activision Blizzard over their market share in the cloud gaming market. Now, there's going to be a lot of stuff I got to mention here first before we get into the discussion in a lot of quotes. So bear with me on this. But we haven't talked about this too much because it's it's been so back and forth. Will they, won't they, that I didn't really want to dig into it until we had some kind of definitive news. And I think this is a big enough bump uh, to mention it. 
So the CMA, Competition and Markets Authority, has prevented Microsoft's proposed purchase of Activision over concerns the deal would alter the future of the fast-growing cloud gaming market, leading to reduced innovation and less choice for UK gamers over the years to come. That's from the CMA's official statement. They continue, Microsoft has a strong position in cloud gaming services, and the evidence available to the CMA showed that Microsoft would find it commercially beneficial to make Activision's games exclusive to its own cloud gaming service. The, the deal would reinforce Microsoft's advantage in the market by giving it control over important gaming content, such as Call of Duty, Overwatch, and World of Warcraft. They continue to talk about Microsoft's attempts to relieve these issues, but found a number of significant shortcomings and this was kind of funny, noting a lack of coverage for potential platforms such as cloud gaming or PC operating systems outside of Windows. I wanted to make a note about this and, and point out that almost no one makes games outside of Windows and Linux because Apple and their OS is so restrictive and non really yeah. conductive to gaming that it's kind of Apple's own fault. Linux has grown a lot in gaming. There's a lot of the Microsoft games. You have to buy them through Steam, but I can play them on my Steam Deck. That is a Linux machine. They are built to run with that. Um, and then any attempt Microsoft had to introduce their games or streaming services to Apple or iOS have been blocked by Apple themselves because they wanted a huge cut or control over it. So that's not really Microsoft's fault for not putting it on there. That's... That's like saying Microsoft should be punished because they don't release games on PlayStation when Sony won't let them release on their hardware because it's not their hardware. Um, and it's also noted Sony, who is the market leader, does not make games for Linux or Apple at all. Um, I think Steam can availability for some games to Linux, but that's it with the Steam Deck. So it's kind of a weird line to draw in the sand for this. Um before I go on to Microsoft's response, do you have anything you want to say on this one? Well, um, the thing about this whole thing is, one, I don't think it's over just yet. Uh, I don't either. That That's one thing I, I think. The other thing is much like the um, Epic Games Apple uh, fight that Epic lost, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, shocker. Um, Epic, is that a lot of dirty laundry has been aired because a lot of the documentation and the um, findings and stuff has been aired out public knowledge to be read right. over by people who love reading this stuff. And the big thing I saw here was, and somebody kind of car uh, compartmentalized it uh, to basically either make you mad or just upset over the whole dealings going back and forth, especially mm -hmm. one of the last things you're going to mention later that the CMA says, yeah, uh, which is really funny, but they said here, they said, Hey, uh, players should never expect final fantasy 16 to be on any Xbox series X S or Xbox one. And the reason is a weird one in the ongoing conflict between Sony and Microsoft. It has been revealed in release documentation from the CMA 3.67 that Sony has signed deals Mm -hmm. with third-party developers to stop them from working with Microsoft specifically. Yep. Square Enix has permission to work with others. Presumably, this would be after the six-month exclusivity period, but Microsoft and the Xbox specifically is off-limits to them. The exact details of the exclusion are not clear yet, but it means that third-party games made for Sony likely won't be on Xbox at any time in the near future and may not be on it at all. And they have a market lead... Uh, or, you know, Sony in regards to gaming far and above what Xbox does, you know? So the fact that they're able to do this and nobody bats an eye and they think that's fine while they're airing the argument that they're worried Microsoft is going to do this while they're literally doing it. And, you know, they had the argument, Oh, Microsoft will raise the prices of their games. And then Sony turns around and I meant to bring up the story for this as well. In a bunch of countries, they didn't do it in the U.S. yet, but they raised the price almost uh, actually over double in some countries of all of their PC games. So if you want to get The Last of Us and all that stuff on PC, you're paying almost a hundred dollars or more to be able to get those games. Um, it, it it makes sense now, you know, even what I just read, because a lot of times 
even including that indie world is when mm-hmm. the indie, indie developers started talking about their games or when you hear about Koei Tecmo or anything else, um, you kind of in the back of your head, like, Hey, all these games are coming out for PS4 and switch. That's weird. Maybe it's because Xbox isn't doing well in Japan. That's not all of it. <laughs> it's because they've been paid off. Yeah. I mean, so this whole point is, it's got to be frustrating for Microsoft and they, they actually responded. And here's what they said, quote, we have already signed contracts to make Activision Blizzard's popular games available on 150 million more devices. Or 150 more devices, not million. Good Lord. There's not even that many devices. I added an extra M in there. <laughs> like Ron Burgundy just read it. Devices? Um, 150 more devices. And we remain committed to reinforcing these agreements through regulatory remedies, said Microsoft President Brad Smith. We're especially disappointed that after lengthy deliberations, this decision appears to reflect a flawed understanding of this market and the way the relevant cloud technology actually works. They continued, the CMA's decision rejects a pragmatic path to address competition concerns and discourages technology innovation and investment in the United Kingdom. We remain fully committed to this acquisition and will appeal. So Microsoft's already said, like, this is a bunch of bull. Like, the reasons you're giving for this are pretty much saying like, hey, because we were a competing cloud company, which Google was another one. Microsoft didn't run them into the ground. Google did that to themselves. So there's other people that are making this tech and trying to compete with it. But apparently since Microsoft was succeeding because they didn't make it just that, they were tying it with Game Pass and other things, that they're going to be punished for that. They're not going to be allowed to do these things. Well, Sony is, they've purchased and are merging with another company again. They bought another game developer. Um, You know, they're doing the raising of the prices. The proofs come out that they're buying off uh, developers, blocking, you know, with the stipulations of not being allowed to make things for Microsoft. Like you said, they're doing every single thing they complained about having done to them. So it's literally, they don't want anyone being able to compete on their level and do to them even remotely, what they're openly doing to others. And and remember, even if Microsoft gets Activision Blizzard, they're still only going to be the third largest publisher and developer, still going to be behind Sony and Nintendo. Like, that's, you know, people argue that, oh, Microsoft's a bigger company. Yeah, they are and a lot of other stuff, but Sony also has movie studios and all this other stuff that they're tied into. So Sony's not small. Like they've had to sell off a lot of their stuff over the decades, but they're not a small, like we're not arguing for a mom and pop company going into this. Sony is a corporation with all this stuff available. And Microsoft is trying to compete in that space by getting this content and some of these tools and being able to expand out into the mobile market as well, which is why they wanted to include King in the Activision Blizzard deal. So, you know, and Microsoft made those deals to bring Call of Duty to competing streaming services. They've already signed stuff for like, what was it? GeForce Now, I think is what it's called or GeForce Go or whatever. They're streaming uh, NVIDIA. I'm sorry, NVIDIA now. Um, they're streaming stuff and a couple other companies. And as well as Nintendo, they said that Call of Duty on their current, like on the Nintendo Switch, and on future hardware would be able to get Call of Duty, which Activision stopped making Call of Duty for Nintendo since the Wii U. Uh, Call of Duty uh, Ghost was the last one that was made, I think, because there was Black Ops 2 and then Ghost, I believe, was the, the second one on the system. And we haven't gotten one since on a Nintendo platform. And they, at the time, had you know unique innovations that made them worthwhile. They were not competitive with the other versions, but... You could play two players on one system online or local on the Wii U with the TV and the gamepad, or you could use motion controls on the Wii, you know, with pointer aiming, like they had their own features. So (laughs) this is where the extra note that you were talking about. And I wanted to mention is funny. The CMA came out and actually argued against Microsoft stating that Nintendo's platforms are not quote, technically capable of running call of duty. So they're thinking that they can just never compete and never have it. So they must not be telling the truth that they've signed these agreements. And it's like, have you guys never heard of ports? You can do that. 
Even, oh god, I don't want the cloud version, but yeah, I guess if you had to. I'm saying it. like you can't it can be say done. it's not possible because uh, you know what they said there just showed kind of the blank statements that CMA is putting out. Um, to say that that we've had you've had Call of Duty Warzone and all this stuff mobile and it's been fine, but then you're yeah. going to say, "Oh, but it can't work on a Switch." I'm like, but the Switch has had Apex Legends. It's had like it's had all the big shooters. Had Overwatch as well. and Fortnite and yeah, it's it, it has them all. The only one it's missing is Call of Duty, and like uh, and Battlefield. But yeah, you know, love it or leave it. It's like it, it, to say that, especially when they even said like future systems that they're like, oh, you're you're not going to be able to put it on that. Yeah, it's the uh, assumption that Nintendo is just making kids' toys that can't run it. But their so, actual quote, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, go with the quote. I have no, the, the actual that. quote is Nintendo does not currently offer Call of Duty, and we have no we have seen no evidence to suggest that its consoles could would be technically capable of running a version of Call of Duty that is similar to those in Xbox and PlayStation in terms of quality of gameplay and content. They uh, that's what the CMA explained in their final report. Okay. You know, as you said, Apex Legends, yeah, it's not going to compete with the Xbox and PlayStation versions, but they're there and they run. Like, you can have ports that are in their own little bubbles that work fine. You know, Fortnite, I have played Doom Eternal. Do, yeah, freaking Doom Eternal, Witcher 3. Um, oh, what Arc, is it? Arc Evolved. Um, yeah, that got fixed finally. Um, I'm trying to remember what the space adventure game was that, uh, uh, blank outer wild it. no no not outer wilds that was a bad port uh, yeah <laughs> that was one was. that needed help no the one uh you could basically explore the entire universe and go no man's you sky want. no man's sky that is actually not a horrible version on switch like it's if that's what you had that is a playable version you know you don't have multiplayer but you can at least explore and play around in it like yeah you would have limitations but there are concessions to that kind of hardware. Like people are willing to put up with a lower resolution, maybe half frame rate game. If they can have it be on a handheld system. I don't know. No, people didn't like, don't want red red fall to be at 30 frames. No, I don't even get me started <laughs> on that crap. But, I, I will plant uh, my flag right now as I have many times before and keep reiterating. I would rather have a lock steady 30 frame game that is comfortable to play than something that could fluctuate and fly around then fight with 60 frames every time. Like, so I have a question for you about this whole CMA yes. uh, acquisition debacle that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it had been said in the past from Sony complaining their side that they were worried that if the acquisition went through that uh, Xbox would basically make it so their version of Call of Duty wouldn't work with theirs. But <laughs> oh, there's a history for that. that in mind, oh, what do you think about the um, information going around that the Xbox versions of all the Call of Duty games have been bottlenecked because of an agreement with Sony? I was going to bring that up because Sony has historically, and this has been shown, had agreements where any game that is offered on their system cannot have extra features on other hardware, including graphical features or gameplay features and things like that. But it's okay for the PlayStation one to have it. So like you can have support for the, the motion controller and all that stuff on a PlayStation, but you may not be able to do like the, the special triggers on an Xbox or some of their features because of that. Or Spider-Man and Avengers. <laughs> Spider-Man, that's Microsoft's fault. They were offered that and they turned it down. I don't understand why Wolverine is only on there, which is kind of annoying. But yeah. But like, yeah, the Avengers stuff. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I misunderstood what you said for a second. You weren't talking about two different games. You were talking about yeah, no, Spider-Man in Avengers. The Avengers I'm no slow. longer supported edition. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I So I don't like that. Like Xbox players get punished. Because I have to pay the full price just like on a PlayStation, but I didn't get Spider-Man or I don't get certain maps or extra content that are locked to the PlayStation versions. And that does nothing to benefit anybody else. And it makes you wonder how those licensing deals work. Because if you go back and look at like um, 
what was it? Marvel's ultimate Alliance three on the switch. That was a switch exclusive, but it was able to have Spider-Man in there, which I keep having to remind people. Sony does not own Spider-Man. Yeah. Look they, at Fortnite. Yeah. They <laughs> own the on all of them. rights to Spider-Man. And I have a feeling for some of this stuff, Sony is pushing that agreement with uh, Marvel saying, Hey, let us have only this and our PlayStation version of the game as part of their uh, dealings back and forth with being able to have Spider-Man show up in the Marvel universe. I guarantee they're going to flex that. There's no way they don't. I mean, good Lord, they use the font on a PS3 for crying out loud. Um, this, I, oh, you know, this in its like own weird way reminds me of like, uh, of like an eating contest where Xbox ha- has somebody who's like a competitive eater, but Sony has somebody who's just hungry. So while they're slowly <laughs> gobbling up these little companies one by one to finish their plate of companies, mm-hmm. Xbox is like, we can just eat the whole thing. And Sony's like, hold on there. That's not fair. Yeah. You can't because, eat with us. Um, and it just reminds me of uh, this is why I'm on Microsoft's side. Uh, yes, I know acquisitions are bad, but this just reminds me of the fact that if you remember years past um, when Minecraft came out on Switch and then connected with Xbox, mm-hmm. who was the one who was the biggest toddler, the biggest baby of wanting to have crossplay, and was just like, no, no, it was all the Sony games. 100% of them so were like, we don't do cross-play. And I don't know who finally like flipped the switch while the president wasn't looking, but then we finally got cross-play. Well, that's the funny thing. It actually was turned on on accident, proving it could be done in a game. Right. And they had to turn it off, uh, which I think was Fortnite. And Fortnite, I think, was the big uh, push that made them have to do it because people were like, oh, I can play Fortnite on my Switch and on my Xbox and on my PC and they all play together, but PlayStation, I can't? Like, uh, no, we're good. Like, we want to play over here. We get more people to play with, more friends on different things. Like, a lot of these multiplayer titles, I don't see why they're locked to just one console. Like, if they can... If they're networking into a server, all of them should be able to network into that. You know, We're, we're in the age where uh, we're done with region locking. We're sick of that. Uh, you buy the copy, play the copy. Who cares where you get it from? Yeah, just let it happen. And we're in the we're in the age of cross progression, cross save, cross play for cross platform. So stop gatekeeping. This is not a good look for any company to do any gatekeeping from this point on. Yeah, like my only gripe with my Steam Deck is Steam has their own format for saves that locks certain other companies from being able to transfer their stuff, which is why I would be perfectly happy if I had to rebuy like Forza Horizon 5 on Steam, but I can't transfer my save over. Like I have it digitally. I can play it on PC, but I can't play it on my Steam Deck because it requires Windows because of the way it's built for Xbox. But the Steam version is there, but I am not starting over with literally hundreds of hours I put into that game. Um, just to do it all again. I, w- I want to carry that over and make it a portable. And the few games that have let me do that, that get around it in different ways, like Witcher 3 and stuff like that, it's been great. Like, it can be done. Like, Steam and Microsoft really need to get their act together and figure that out. Um, Because I'll tell you right now, Microsoft, I will double dip without a problem if I get to play some of these games on my Steam Deck. Because I, I played with my wife for the Diablo 4 beta, mm-hmm. and it was having its issues uh, with certain people's accounts for some reason, and my uh, UI was non-existent. It disappeared in my PC version. <laughs> but for my wife, it worked fine. So I was like, but I still want to play before the weekend's over, the beta weekend. Uh-huh. So what did I do? I went downstairs, downloaded it for PS5, and lo and behold, my character and our progress are right there. Yeah, isn't that great? And I was like, this is fantastic. And uh, in a new thing for me, because I wasn't used to PlayStation playing ball like this, because of the Discord functionality, I was able to talk with my wife on her PC, and we went in a Discord PlayStation chat, specifically for the game, because they said the the in-game chat is still uh, being worked on. The kinks were being worked out. 
But the fact that we could speak from a PlayStation to a PC was, I was like, oh, this is unheard of. Because I was like, PlayStation talking to PC? Yeah. What? Like, it, it shouldn't be an issue with these, especially. And it's funny, Microsoft, you know, Minecraft being the earlier example, because that was the one when Microsoft bought it out that everyone was, oh, no, Minecraft's going to get pulled for everything. You know, you're going to have to have an Xbox to play it. And that game is everywhere. They even. I remember when they even like stuck the dagger in Sony with that. Remember the trailer they put out better together? Yep. That was great because they were showing Nintendo and, and Microsoft Xbox playing together. And I mean, Microsoft has proven pretty well from what I've seen. And yes, I do like a lot of Xbox stuff. I have a lot of PlayStation things, but especially with Minecraft, they've, they did VR for, PlayStation like you could get VR on the PlayStation 4 for that version of Minecraft and play it. Um I actually bought the PlayStation 4 version of Minecraft so I could mess with the VR and have it access my realm and once again the whole PlayStation connection thing was a big issue. I ended up returning it. I never even bothered playing it because it wouldn't allow me to sign in because it said, "Oh, well you had signed in once before with this account on this other thing, so you can't do it here. You have to make a whole new account." pay for a new server. And I was like that gone. No, I'm not doing this. So Sony gets in their own way for this stuff while stomping all over everyone else's area in the playground. Like it's, yeah, they're, they've they're, become they're a bully in a lot a, of it. They're putting up their fight with one hand and the other hand is making deals behind everybody's back to buy these companies. It's not even behind their back. Like they're yeah. doing it blatantly, but well, well, well the, the rumors don't get out, but once the deal is finalized, suddenly they're like, oh, yeah, we just bought another company while we're complaining about a co- yeah. another uh, competitor buying a company. And there's no investigations in those. And I think you're right. It's because they're doing it in smaller increments. Everyone's like, well, it's not that big a deal. Well, that not not big a deal that many times becomes a deal, becomes a big deal. You know, Microsoft's trying to catch up. So they were doing it on mass because. You know, you get Activision Blizzard. That is a company. That's everything that comes with it. Plus, we get we had the bonus thing that they would force Bobby Kotick out. So it's like, come on, guys, win win. Yeah, hurry up and get this over here so we can fire Kotick. I want to see that happen. Lord. Well, I think that's a a good time to wrap this mess up, and we'll see what happens in the future. But we'll go ahead and go over where you can find us on the internet. So, Stephen, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me lurking around Twitter uh, without a blue check mark. Thankfully, um, at loading underscore time. All right. And you can find me, Jeremy Powers, your host over at Zenspath, Z-E-N-S-P-A-T-H on Twitter. Also without a check mark, without much of a following, the few of you that are there. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, you can also watch the video version of this at youtube.com slash Zenspath C-O-M. Um, the at Zen's path also works over on hive when I'm over there trying to see if that's going to survive. It's on life support. I've tried doing Mastodon, but I don't even know what name to give you to figure that out. It's so confusing. really confusing over there. I've had nobody communicate with me on that. So it's. Oh yeah. Before you sign off, we need a four button podcast, Twitter account update. Oh yeah. No. Once again, I have put in another report and once again, I've been completely blown off. Okay. I just I've, I'm almost giving up at this point. They're never going to respond to me. I'm I'm not some famous rich person, so they don't give a two dams about it. But you can always come over and join us at, on Discord over at bitly slash Discord, where you can talk with us. We can arrange times. We can play games together. We can you know chat on there and do stuff. We got a few of our listeners that do talk to us on there, which are a lot of fun. Um. And we just want to be able to communicate with everybody. I'm looking at more ways to market the show. Like I've started leaving more cards in different places. I've tried. I'm looking at doing some more advertising on some other podcasts. Um, We've done some prior on like the greatest generation and those shows. I'm thinking about trying that again to see if it works. Because the last time we did it was with the old group, which I'm no longer with. So it's probably time to redo that. Um, And whatever other kind of marketing I can think of. I have... Somewhere around here. Yeah, come, come to our Discord. Tell everybody you missed seeing Kristen's face this, this week. <laughs> I'll just add his picture of his face and we'll just say he was quiet the whole week. Um, but see, like even, even tried, I made a hat 
it's actually a really comfortable hat. So Works. I can make these if anybody wants one. Um, I'm working on trying to get us some music for the beginning of the show. Maybe try and edit in some interstitials. We're going to look at the format of the show of how we uh, arrange it to try and make it a little more formatted. So we kind of have a time period for everything. Not like, I don't want to be rigid about it, but I think we need to be more structured. Does that make sense? Make I think sense. it would do us good. And we've, we stick to that pretty well. A little bit behind, you know, a little behind baseball for all of us <laughs> behind the curtain there. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and end it from here. This is episode 87 of the Zen's Path 4 Button Podcast, and we're out. Peace. Oh, tears of the kingdom. <laughs> Maybe Microsoft will buy us next. <laughs>